いらっしゃいませ。Japan is so unique. I'll show you a fantastic place with lovely people. On this trip to Japan, we start in Tokyo with a unique traditional Japanese folk guitar, Tsugaru Shamisen Restaurant in the suburb of Asakusa. We've got weird, wonderful stuff like this. In Kappabashi, we'll find street after street full of kitchen utensils and weird plastic foods. I'll show you how to dress like Japanese woman. And we visit one of Tokyo's most famous food streets and enjoy great food at a very reasonable price. Oh, yeah, my wagyu too. And finally, we'll find out the secrets of wagyu beef and discover more about Japan's most popular drink, sake. This is my secret. Shh. Please write a comment below if you want to know more about the places featured in this video. I'll answer your questions. Let's get you in the mood with some totally traditional music. Can you hear? No one knows this place. Absolutely fantastic. You must come. This Tsugaru Shamisen's top players in Japan. Please enjoy. Tsugaru Shamisen, which is a Japanese traditional folk guitar, is originated from China through Okinawa sometime in 16th century. Mr. Yamanaka has been playing the shamisen for 10 years and he was the champion of the 2017 All Japan competition. Also, he is the 22nd champion of the 2019 competition. But amazingly, all of the players in this restaurant has big titles just like him. He says, traditional music isn't terribly popular nowadays. Japan isn't any different from any other industrial countries. He also says Tsugaru Jongara Bushi is the most famous song in Tsugaru Shamisen. It starts from the tune everybody knows, but soon becomes improvised version by the particular player. Mr. Yamanaka explains that the player improvises it depending on his or her mood, condition and emotion. This Kazunoya Oiwake is probably one of only handful of places where you can still enjoy its traditional music and traditional food, which by the way we cleared up very quickly because they were so yummy. One of the players danced the festival minion and the audience loved all of the entertainment because they performed so passionately. He says the people who come here are all regulars and love to start singing between the show. This must be the origin of karaoke. And crowd goes wild. Well I did. Customer is 92. I'll be so happy if I can sing like him at that age. Fantastic! And look, 
there is absolutely no foreign people. You just got to come. It's absolutely and for this speeches. He loves for young and foreign people to come and enjoy this forgotten law music. In Asakusa, please come. It was certainly a night we enjoyed so much. I'm in my kimono. I'll twirl for you. Kimono has been in Japan for many, many years, as you know. This is the most formal way uh, of uh, dressing up for Japanese women. But nowadays, there aren't many people wearing kimono. It's only the formal occasion, like wedding, funeral, children's uh, graduation. It's because traditional kimono is extremely expensive. They're all made from silk, very often hand-painted, kimono itself and obi, this sash, it's, everything is extremely expensive. So it is, and also because you don't wear it, you can't wear it, because you can't wear it by yourself, today someone put this kimono on me. So um, it's expensive to buy, expensive to wear. And also it's not practical, if you spill some food, it's a heck of a job to clean it, right? because it's pure silk, right? So it's not very popular for young people to wear nowadays. But now, look, look at this place. There are so many places like this popping up. Very easy everyday kimono like this. And they put it on in a matter of like one hour, two hours, do your hair. And it's very, very reasonable price. So if you come to Japan, please try. You can walk around, just like Japanese girls, on the street wearing kimono. Huh? Look at this kimono, come, come. Being dressed in a kimono is a very special experience. There are so many kimono to choose from. Look at this. As I mentioned, these kimono specialists are dotted all around Japan. Huh? Can you see? This is the formal one. As you can see, very subtle. This is slightly more elaborate one. It's a different color. Huh? This, is, this is the most formal kimono for young people before you get married. Can you see the sleeve length is very long here? Mine is for the married one. Why don't you dress like Japanese and you'll probably get a bit of attention from the crowds. So please, please come and try kimono on. This is unique kappamashi where you can get great stuff for your kitchen. If you enjoy cooking, you'll love this place. Mmm, looks yum yum, but this is plastic. Looks better than the real stuff. But if you don't barbecue anybody, you'll still love lots of fun and quirky stuff for your kitchen kitchen utensils, full of small independent shops, you can buy all sorts of practical, impractical and unique stuff. Japanese knives. If you want to own the world famous Japanese kitchen knives, this is the place you must come. Kappabashi is the name of the town in all parts of Tokyo. I am at the back corridor street. Now corridor street is like a corridor, right? Long street with full of different kind of restaurant. Of course, Japanese traditional food and Italian, Thai, Bali, all, all sorts of crowded restaurant, crowded. But this is a secret. This is a back corridor street. For Japanese, Ginza has the image of fabulously expensive shopping area. Today is Monday, so there are many people, but weekends, it's packed full of people here. Ginza is where all meets new, totally full of small restaurants amongst the tall office buildings. This is a Japanese eel restaurant. You might think eel, but it's Japanese eel. It's absolutely fantastic. You've got to try when you're here, okay? Beautifully, tenderly cooked. It's like a fish, but it's a beautiful with a beautiful sauce. Where wine and whiskey bars cater to the office workers every day. Oyster, oyster bar, wow. But a gem for tourists who likes to enjoy affordable Japanese foodie treats. This is a standing bar. Can you see? Everybody's standing. Huh? No one wants to sit. This is oden. Oden is a Japanese winter food. It's a lovely home cooked, uh, beautiful, very homey, homey, homey food. Of course, Italiano. 
who doesn't like Italian? And hey ho, British pub. Welcome to Japan. And another yakitori restaurant. There are so many yakitori restaurants on there. It's a beef tongue, beef tongue specialist. And this is the sushi. Can you see this? See this? Uh, this must be the most popular sushi restaurant. Look, people are queuing up. This is Monday evening. Look at this. Look, that's Corridor Lunch. This is just over four pounds. We took a ticket and waited for 15 minutes outside of this Midori, which looked like the busiest and most popular sushi restaurant in the street. And the drink is... What is the one that you want? The one that you want is the one that you want. Look, this is the menu of Midori. Look, it has got all English translations together with the photos. So you don't need to worry about what to order. You can just pick whatever you want here. Upside down. Oops, today. This middle one is today's chef's recommendation. Look at this. Some absolutely fresh fish. Just less than 20 pounds. And this shoy sauce, this is the original shoy sauce. Thank you very much. That was delicious. And Bye. such fresh and delicious sushi and drinks for two for 6,655 yen, around 43 quid, and a great experience in one of Tokyo's most fascinating streets. The following night, we went to discover more about Japan's world famous beef. Tonight, we are in Wagyu restaurant near Shibuya. Uh, Mr. Ohashi's restaurant. Thank you very much, Mr. Ohashi. Wagyu outside Japan means just Japanese beef, right? But there are many, many different kinds of Japanese beef. So I would like professional to uh, ask us lots of questions about it and then let's understand a little bit better about Wagyu beef. Hi. De, eto... Mr. Ohashi's father was a butcher and Mr. Ohashi grew up knowing that the cheaper but equally delicious piece of beef was not as popular as the more expensive cuts. He wanted to serve beef at very reasonable prices and that's the reason he opened this restaurant over 30 years ago. He says there are three different kinds of beef in Japan black haired, wet haired, and Holstein. About 90% of Wagyu are black haired cows. Apart from that kind of cow, there are many different names of beef depending on where it has been raised. He says the most famous and expensive ones are Matsuzaka, Kobe, and Omi beef. They are the three top brands. But he also says there are so many other reasonably priced cuts of beef which are equally tasty. A5 is the most marbled top meat and most expensive, but it's not necessarily most popular as a steak. It might be too fatty for some people. This is A5, the best one. The 5 means, can you see this white basket fat? There are so many white parts. So this is A5, the best one. This is A3. So you can see the difference. Five has a lot more white part, and this is three, so a bit less. According to him, it's not necessarily five. You might want to eat five as a steak. Abrami ga suki ka, abrami toyu ka. Kekoku kono abrami ni umami ga abura ga umai desu. He says. The A5 meat is suitable for grilling as some of the fat drops and leaves the meat with the right amount of fat. He recommends A3 for steak, but lamb steak is pretty good in Japan as you can eat it for almost half the price. What a delicious night it was as we tasted three different grades of Wagyu that Mr. Ohashi cooked. 
よろしくお願いします。はい、ありがとうございました。はい。This is Yoyogi Uehara between Shinjuku and Shibuya. And can you see this is like a normal homey town, but there are lots of lots of lovely cool bars around here. So check it out. <laughs> so, this place is a Japanese sake bar. Bar ao means blue, by the way. Specializes in sake. kind of Japanese sake. Now, I'm going to ask the professional what she recommends and what are the differences on this. One of the owners, Satsuki, explained that there are basically two main groups of sake. The first is Junmaishu, which is made with water and rice. And the second is Honjozo, which is made with water, rice, and alcohol. Each of the two groups of sake has four varieties depending on how much polished rice they use. Please ask me about them in the comments below. The sake is made from the rice, right? The key ingredient of sake is rice. Scrape it, scrape it. And the taste depends on how much the rice is polished. It becomes only the middle bit. Often, more than 50% of the rice grain is polished away. In the sake making process, and the most polished rice creates Junmai Dai Ginjo with no alcohol added. This is usually the most expensive, but it doesn't mean it's the best. More polished rice means a purer taste. Less polished rice is generally cheaper and often has a more complex flavor. This is from our home county. This is Gumma, it's me. Gumma is our house. These are my creations. Lovely, lovely, lovely ladies. So, it's really what you prefer. But when I have sushi, I think the pure sake matches the delicate taste of the raw fish. Satsuki mentioned that sake doesn't mature like wine, as sake is often enjoyed immediately after it's produced. Generally, you should drink your sake soon after it's purchased, but it can be left for up to one year in a dark and cool place. This is cold sake, you, you're supposed to drink cold. Then, my last question was should I drink sake hot or cold? Satsuki told me that there is no rule. So, ask the restaurant, but hot sake on a cold, snowy night was my dad's favorite drink, and cold sake. On a hot day, it's very refreshing with the right food. By the way, it is difficult to pop into Japanese bar just for drink. Almost always, you have to order food as well. Sake is served in many different ways. Hot sake is poured from the small jug tokuri and sipped from ochoko. The cold sake is more often drunk from a small glass. but. If you want to drink sake like native Japanese, pour the sake into a glass which sits in a small wooden box mass. Sake should overflow the glass and fill the box to show the generosity of your host. Just make sure you drink all of sake in the glass and the mass. Our noisy neighbors who were celebrating opening of sake factory in France told us they are using French rice to make sake. It will be a fusion of traditional sake with hint of French flavor. He was very nervous. I can't wait to taste. So, after Satsuki's great hospitality, we are all nervous, but we had a few drinks. We enjoyed tasting so many different sakes. Probably too many. I can't remember just how we got back to our hotel.、Yay! I hope you enjoyed this episode of My Secret Japan. All the detail of where I visited in Tokyo is in the information below. In the next episode, we'll head for the Japan Alps and show you the secret of the hot spring where you can bathe with the monkeys. For further information about names and addresses of the places featured in this video, please write a comment below. Please thumbs up and subscribe if you like to see more. Thank you for watching and see you soon!